Welcome, one and all, to Neko no Tsuki, aka Cat Month, the month where we pay homage to those furry feline friends we've welcomed into our homes and our hearts for thousands of years. Throughout the month, we'll be looking at several different films featuring cats. With these films, we'll explore what they show us about the relationship between feline kind and humankind, as well as the significance of cats within Japanese culture. We have a heartfelt slice of life film, a philosophical drama, a down to earth documentary, a couple of anime classics, and a period comedy, all of which strongly deal with just why we love cats. So, let's not beat around the scratching post and start off with our first film of Neko no Tsuki Rent a Cat. Rent a Cat is a 2012 film directed by Naoko Ogigami that unfortunately doesn't seem to have made it this side of the Pacific in any official capacity. It tells the story of Sayako, a young woman of questionable origins, as she comes to interact with various lonely people around her town. We say questionable thanks to her repeated claims to have made a fortune in different modes of occupation. Regardless of her past, however, Sayako currently has made it her business to rent out cats to people in need of physical and emotional connection with others. She's never straight with the audience as to how she makes a living, but seems to be renting cats out of the kindness of her heart rather than for monetary gain. As all of her clients remark at one point or another, the cats are always cheaper than expected. Sayako doesn't wish to place them in a hierarchy, instead, charging a flat rate for all rentals. Over the course of the film, and among other tertiary characters peppered in throughout, Sayako, via an episodic narrative, encounters a salaryman away from his family, an elderly woman, and a car rental clerk. Episodic might not cut it in terms of a description here, given that these short tales are more like variations on a theme. In fact, they're quite repetitive, though in a charming way rather than an annoying manner, perhaps indicating how cats and other domestic animals have been part of human civilization from its early origins, and how they will likely continue to be part of it for some time yet, perhaps until the end. The film explores how, like many of us in real life, each of these three main people is left needing for something, and how Sayako's cats perfectly fill the empty spaces in their lives. Sayako inspects the prospective renters' living accommodations and livelihoods before agreeing to allow her cats to live with them. In turn, the renters agree to return their cat to Sayako when they are no longer in need of a feline's companionship. It's through this simple, charming premise that Rent a Cat steals the hearts of audiences. Before going into what the film means on an abstract level, let's look a bit into the woman behind the film, Naoko Ogigami. Naoko Ogigami is a university trained filmmaker who has been working since the early 2000s, serving both as writer and director on all of her feature projects to date. She has stated that she, quote, can't direct anything besides her own work, end quote. Ogigami graduated from Chiba University before studying film at the University of Southern California in the 1990s. She claims to have made the move to America because she didn't think Japan possessed any quality film schools at the time. Returning to her home country, Ogigami became more or less an independent filmmaker, working for herself and small production houses. This means that she is able to retain almost complete control over her projects, making her not unlike the protagonist in Rent a Cat. Ogigami's half dozen or so films are known collectively as Iyashi Ke Ega, which translates to emotional healing films. This perfectly captures the sense of Rent a Cat, as it's one of the most heartwarming pieces of cinema we've seen in some time. Common to her filmography by her own admission, Rent a Cat provides an open interpretation and an open ended narrative. This means that it's the type of story lacking a whole lot in the plot department. Rather, Sayoko, her cats, and her clients populate the film and are allowed to simply exist in the situations that the cat rental service creates. Like the films of Hirokazu Koreeda, this means that the film ends up providing viewers with a more personal, realistic sense of character. The situations may be quirky, like a man running away from home looking for a feline friend in place of family, or a wanted criminal having drinks with a friend while on the run. But these situations are never unrealistic, meaning that anyone, cat lover or not, can relate to the film. Cats have long played an important role in human civilization, as companions and as symbols. In Japan specifically, cats have long been seen as bringers of luck and goodwill. The Maneki Neko is a statue character who originated in Japan, thought to allow their owners good fortune and positive experiences. 
In this film, when an elderly woman is presented with a feline friend, her heart is warmed and she is able to spend the remainder of her days in peace and serenity. In stark contrast, her son, who scorns this same cat, is later seen conflicted with bad prospects of fortune in his real estate endeavors. Ah, <sighs> if only he had appreciated that orange boy. While certain, less positive depictions of cats exist, like the yokai Nekomata and Bakeneko, the Maneka Neko is certainly the most significant and prominent cultural cat export from the country. This should speak to the importance of and reverence for cats in Japan, which explains why a film like Rent-A-Cat would originate from and be set in the Land of the Rising Sun. Ogigami stated in a 2012 interview that the film came about from meeting her father's friend who, when in his 70s, lost his pet cat. Being at an advanced age, he worried that he was too old to get another cat. In turn, this sparked the rental service idea in Ogigami's mind. It was also likely inspired by the passing of Ogigami's own cats several years prior to the release of Rent-A-Cat. In a 2011 interview regarding her previous film, Toilet, she mentioned that this was the reason for a several year gap in her filmography. Thus, it's understandable why Ogigami, a fan of felines, would want to pay reverence to cats worldwide. As Sayoko remarks at one point when leaving a pineapple on her cat whispering grandmother's altar, this type of fruit looks strange alongside her grandmother's photo. A cat, on the other hand, fits perfectly. Similarly, toward the close of the film, Sayoko states that cats might not be able to fill every empty spot in one's life, but that they are important parts of our lives nonetheless. This, then, is the purpose of Rent-A-Cat, to show how our relationships with animals, particularly felines, are an integral part of the human experience. Many people might not appreciate cats, while others might be allergic to them, but ultimately Rent-A-Cat explores how important animals are to us humans. To be a part of society, we need other people. To be a part of nature at large, we must be friends with animals just the same. This difference can be seen with how the car rental clerk's mundane life is made better by the introduction of a cat. Sayoko comes in contact with this woman, helping both of them be social, but the cat that they bond over helps the car clerk bond with a world beyond humankind. Rent-A-Cat shows that not only are cats an important part of the world, but how they affect us personally. Through this shared time and space, we mutually enrich one another's lives. Take for example the man who is ridiculed for his stench, and how he meets a cat who doesn't mind his smell. For some, such as a salary man working to provide for his distant family, the commitment to raising an animal for the duration of their life is a tall order. Through Sayako's rental service, she affords the love and affection of a feline to those who would otherwise not have the opportunity to befriend cats for reasons like this. Sometimes, you just need a friend who will listen to you, who will be there for you no matter what, and who is dependent on you just as you are on them. After the elderly woman from the film's opening passes on, her son comes to collect her things. Despite this strained relationship, the woman has kept her fridge stocked with his favorite dessert, insinuating that she wanted to be close to him. In place of this, she takes up a friendship with the cat who fulfills this need for companionship. On the flip side, the film explores how important humans are to cats. One particular specimen, a scraggly white cat, continues to show up to Sayoko's house. He seems somewhat put off by her at first, but with repeated signs of affection and care on her part, he continues coming back, displaying just how much they also rely on us. It's this sense of mutually beneficial existence that is perfectly captured in Rent-A-Cat, and it's the very reason why we highly recommend the film to anyone looking for a heartwarming portrait of humans and cats. In one of the interviews we've cited throughout this video, Okigami highlighted her intent with Rent-A-Cat. Rather than simply rephrasing what she said, we'll leave you with her own words in the hopes of driving home just how great feeling of a film this is. As Okigami said when asked what she wanted the audience takeaway to be, Quote, I recently had children, so I really understand the feeling of loving and treasuring small things. I feel very sorry for people who cannot feel that way towards small creatures, people who abuse animals, or children even. I feel this is a handicap and a psychological disease. So I really want to celebrate and communicate this feeling of treasuring small beings and the creatures of the world. 